this is my sidekick, Dabby, and today it is time for a book talk. I am wearing this huge shirt because it is my only Ember in the Ashes shirt. It says, Vow your blood and body to the Empire. And the back it says, An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. And today I am talking about the second book in the Ember in the Ashes series, A Torch Against the Night. If you have not read An Ember in the Ashes yet, I definitely recommend this one. This was one of my absolute go-to recommendations last year. Whenever anybody came to ask me what they should read, I would throw this at them. Not throw it, because this book is signed and I love it, and I would never want to actually hurt the book, but this is my first recommendation for a lot of people. It has a little bit of a legend feel by Marie Lu at the very beginning, but then it takes on a world of its own. It's about two people who, at the beginning, don't know each other, have nothing in common. One of them, her family is killed, and she ends up on the run and having to join a rebellion to save somebody. Um, and then the boy is actually a part of the society where the people are trained to be merciless killers, basically, and they wear these masks. And these two people both need to do what it takes to survive. And I can't say anything else, but I can say it's amazing and it's heart-wrenching, and there are things in here that will destroy you, and I mean that in the best possible way. Definitely read this. If you have not read this one yet, I'm going to ask that you go read it now. I don't have a book talk for this because I read it before I started my channel, but I do have a fandom feels episode with this where I talked about it with Natasha and Kate. And I will link that below, or you can click the book to check that out if you have read this book. It's pretty long. I actually just looked through it the other day, and it was pretty cool to remember some of my thoughts from when I first read that, and I'll talk about that again in a little bit. Again, if you haven't read this one yet, go check it out. If you have, stick around for another minute. Today, I'm talking about A Torch Against the Night, the sequel to An Ember in the Ashes. And in this one, Elias and Laia are on the run, and they are trying to get to Koth, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, they're trying to get to Koth prison to save Darren before anything bad happens. And at the same time, Helene, who is a major character in this one, is on the hunt for Elias because she's ordered to kill him since he escaped execution in the first one. And this book is insane, and I mean that in the greatest way. I gave it five stars. The first half of it, I think, was a little bit slower than An Ember in the Ashes, but it more than made up for it in the second half. That's all I'm going to say before I get into spoilers, but go read it, come back, and talk to me, okay? No preamble, I'm getting into this book. There is one thing I want to talk about first. Um, hi Steph, I know you watch all of my videos. You're going to actually want to mute this in a second because I'm going to be making fun of you, but in making fun of you, I'm probably going to be saying something that's going to freak you out. So I'm going to put a little scroll along the bottom when it's safe for you to listen again, okay? Before I started this book, my friend Steph, who has read the first one, she texts me telling me that I need to read this book before her and tell her if it's safe for her to read. Now, there are a couple things that freak Steph out, and I was jumping to all sorts of conclusions based on what was in the first one about these terrible, awful things that could be happening in this book that could be freaking her out. One thing you have to know is she is deadly afraid of spiders. And not just, like, actually seeing a spider, but she's afraid of the word spider. So I guess on page four, which is, like, the first page, there are two mentions of a tarantula. You don't even see the tarantula, you just hear it. You probably don't even remember that there was any mention of a tarantula in this book, because it was not significant. But she freaked out, she decided she couldn't read the book, until I told her it was safe. I was expecting, like, 
an acromantula, or people to be covered in spiders, but it was absolutely nothing. But anyway, I digress. Let's get into the actual book. For this one, I did not write in my notebook because Natasha and Kate had read it before me, so I was just kind of texting them as I was reading it and giving them all of my reactions. So then I copied and pasted our conversation into a Word document, so I'm going to refer to that to remind me of my thoughts as I was reading this. Early on in this book, there was there were those little glances between Laya and Elias where you're like, okay, so they're on the run, their lives are in danger, but look, they're so into each other, they're so cute. I'm a huge Laya Elias fan, if you can't tell, and I'll get back to that later, but I just love them. And the little moments where they were like so awkward with each other or just like watching each other, they made me so happy. Okay, anyway, so we have that scene with the commandant and she cuts Elias and Elias spares her life for some reason. I guess, you know, she's his mother and all that, whatever, not a good mother. And then there's that triumphant smile and I'm like, oh crap, what just happened? What don't we know? And then, of course, he's dying. And in my head, I'm like, well, it's Elias. They just announced that there are two more books, so it's a four-book series. Elias is not going to die halfway through the series. He can actually be dying. There, it has to be a different poison, or there's a cure they don't know about, something. There's no way Sabatier is going to kill off Elias in the second book, or even early in the third book. No way. Well, I guess... She did, actually, but she got around it! Yay! Elias is safe! Again, with my love of Laya and Elias, there's that moment where they get close and they're about to kiss, and then Keenan shows up! I hated Keenan. Last book, I didn't like Keenan. I was actually watching the video of me talking with the other two in the last book, and we were talking about all of the different couples and all of the different possibilities, and I was just like, Keenan, like, I don't care about Keenan. He's not a part of this love story. He shouldn't exist. Just go away. And then he shows up right when they're about to kiss, and I'm like, I hate you. I don't want you here. Go away. Izzy can stay. I love Izzy, but go away, Keenan. I don't want you here. I've talked about this a lot in other videos, but here's another one of those books where I kind of wanted things to go both ways because clearly the commandant was up to something and I couldn't figure out exactly what it was but she clearly wanted Helene out she, she didn't tell Helene that Elias was dying already because she wanted Helene hunting Elias so I was like okay so Helene clearly needs to find Elias so she can focus on stopping the commandant from whatever she's doing but at the same time, I obviously didn't want Helene to find Elias because when Helene found Elias, she was going to have to kill Elias. So, it, what was I supposed to want to happen? I mean, what I really wanted to happen was Helene to find Elias and Elias be like, dude, my mom's up to no good, you should work with us, and Helene be like, yeah, I'm gonna join you and we're gonna bring down the Commandant and Marcus and... Everyone's happy, except her family. Oh, I want to talk about Hannah. So, what is up with Hannah? Like, was it a jealousy thing? And I guess it's because Helene left and wasn't spending time with her anymore, and she felt left out, she felt lonely, maybe she was jealous. She probably was jealous because Helene was now, like, the favorite daughter. But she was just mean. And she was so proud of the fact that she was marrying an evil person. Ugh, I guess she was like helping the family. I'm, I'm hoping that she was just happy to be able to help the family in a way. But I don't know. She was like proud that she could marry Marcus. And that Marcus wanted to marry her. Even though they purposely hid Livy. So that knowing that he would choose Livy over her. Poor Hannah kind of feel bad for her now. She's not the prettiest, she's not the best fighter, she's clearly not the smartest. Well, and now she's dead. So, yeah. Moving on. So eventually, 
Elias leaves the group and I was losing it at this point because have I mentioned that I hate Keenan? Be like before I knew he was totally and completely evil, I hated Keenan. And I'll get back to that in a moment. Elias leaves and he's like, okay, I'm just gonna go off on my own now that I have the medicine I need. And I mean, you knew that was gonna be a disaster. Like when has going off on your own in a book ever been successful? Ever, ever, never. No, you never go off on your own. Everybody needs help. If we learned anything from the Harry Potter series, it's that you are always better with your friends than you are by yourself. I actually said halfway through this book that I hope that there's no cure for Elias. I hope he just like doesn't die when it's time for him to die. And then he's just like, what? I'm supposed to be dead. And he's like standing with the soul catcher, but he's not dead. And she's just like laughing, being like, ha ha ha, you were never dying. But I guess that didn't happen. But something almost similar did. I'll get back to like Keenan in a moment. I want to talk about Helene for a second because she's on this mission to find and kill the person that she loves or she thought she loved. I mean, she did love him. I don't think she loved him the way she thought she loved him. I think she just loved him as a best friend and her closest confidant. And she was confusing that with romantic love, at least partly. So she started out this book being tortured. And the person that was torturing her is now spying on her as they go on this mission to try to kill Elias. She also has two friends, but there's this guy. And I was kind of having an internal struggle because you see her growing closer to Harper. And it's like, like, they're cute together. They're getting along. He's starting to trust her clearly more than he trusts the commandant. And I was like, kind of feeling them as a couple. But I'm like, but it, it, he tortured her. Like, should I be supporting a couple where one of them literally he beat her every day for like weeks but that was before he knew her and I like I can't really support this but I do I don't think he would ever hurt her now and I think that's the difference it was his job to hurt her and that sucks but I think if he was told to do that to her now he wouldn't and I think that's why I'm kind of okay with it so at this point, Marcus has already decided that he's going to marry Helene's sister. Which, by the way, looking back at my video, I had actually forgotten that Zach, Marcus's brother, was in love with Helene. Like, actually in love with Helene. Whereas Marcus was always kind of like infatuated with her in a way that he just wanted power over her. But Zach actually really liked her. I don't know, I would forgotten about that. Anyway, going back, so there's the moment when he comes up to her and they're not even kissing, he's not even like trying to kiss her, he just bites her lip. What is that? He literally just comes up to her and bites her lip. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird and creepy and he needs to just go away. Marcus, go away. And then, of course, once you realize that the commandant is trying to gain the empire, I literally wrote to them, and I was like, crap. Now I have to hope that Marcus stays in power. I don't want to hope that Marcus stays in power. I hate Marcus, but the commandant would be even worse. <sighs> so Elias gets to cough, and he pretty quickly finds out that Darren is dead. Now... If you believed, for a second, that Darren was actually dead, you have not read enough YA action books. Nobody important in a YA book is dead unless you see them die. If you don't see them die, they ain't dead. I knew he was going to come back. 
and I was really mad at Elias for giving up and just thinking he was dead and thinking it was over because I'm like, Elias, don't you know that you're living in a YA book? And don't you know that nobody's dead in a YA book unless you see them die? I guess he didn't know he was in a YA book, but I knew. So I was mad at him. Anyway, he gets captured. That warden. I don't like the warden, but I guess it doesn't matter anymore. And then, oh, poor Tess. I'm so glad. I love the relationship between Tess and Elias. He gave him a name. Like, he was, he basically became a father to Tess. Like, who names you? Your parents name you. So now, he is Tess's unofficial father. Once he found out Izzy was dead, and she died protecting somebody, and she was so proud of that. And she was happy that she was able to give her life to save somebody else. And she said, don't you dare take that away from me. I made my own choice. You are not responsible for the choices that I made. He realizes what Lyle was saying about wanting to make her own choices and what Tass was saying about wanting to help him and not taking no for an answer. And then he realizes that he really does need other people. Like I said, he should have read Harry Potter. He would have already known that. So he makes this plan. He has Tass help him. And then at that moment, Lyle shows up and they're all working together to create this plan. Going back. Like I said, I was talking to Natasha and Kate as I was reading this, and Kate was telling me that there was one specific part that she was waiting for me to get to. She wasn't saying more than that, but she was saying there was one specific part. So I get to the point where Elias finds out that Darren is alive, he breaks out, he gets into Darren's prison, and he's talking to him, and... Darren is saying, he just kept asking about Laia. I didn't know why, he just kept asking about Laia. And I, I didn't tell him anything important, just things like that she likes her tea so sweet it could kill a bear, and blah, 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 blah. And I stopped. And I was like, who made that sweet tea back when they were with Afya? Who made it? And I started writing in all caps, and I went back in the book, which I later found out I didn't have to because Elias figured it out later on that same page. But I went back in that book, and I saw that it was Keenan, and Keenan also made that comment about the tea so sweet it can go there, and I lost it. I literally put my bookmark in the book carefully, closed the book, set it aside, and then stood up and stormed my own apartment. I was punching things, I was kicking things, I jumped on my bed and I was banging on my bed. Dobby was terrified of whatever was happening. I lost it. I, ah, uh, because I hated Keenan. I always hated him. Oh, I need to talk that line. Something dark passes across his face. Some shadow unknown, but not perhaps unexpected. Keenan had always had a darkness about him. I feel a flicker of unease in my stomach, swift as a beat of a hummingbird's wings. It is forgotten a moment later, as his eyes shut and he closes the distance between us. I'm going to read that part again. I feel a flicker of unease in my stomach. It is forgotten a moment later. So, wait, so you're getting close to this guy. Something crosses over his face that makes you basically sick to your stomach for a second. And you're just like, whatever, he's going to kiss me. And then you kiss him, and then you sleep with him. <laughs> what? I, <sighs> I'm sorry. If somebody is about to kiss me, and for a moment, he has this look that makes me like, want to throw up. Like, that's how I took that. It's like, for a second, she wanted to throw up. Like, I... No! Get away! Move away from him! Go! Oh my gosh. So then, it turns out that he's the Nightbringer. He's this, like, creepy creature, not human thing 
that disguised himself as a child to infiltrate the resistance and gather these objects to help free all of these creatures that over time have become super evil. So basically he's like the most evil thing ever. But a part of him really did love her. I... <laughs> Ew. When we found out about him, but she hadn't yet, I was like, oh, she is going to lose it when she finds out. Elias is going to lose it when he finds out. Darren is going to lose it when he finds out. And I was expecting Kenan to still be with her when they all came back together, and Elias was like, by the way, that dude, evil. But apparently that didn't happen. So she gives him this armlet that is apparently going to help him set his evil kind free. And then he just, like, tells the truth and leaves, which is a little weird. So they have their plan to break out of prison. And they almost make it, and then Elias dies. He dies. He actually dies. He goes to the waiting place, and he's there for real. What? No. No, what? Uh, Darren is dying right next to him. Tass is there, probably also about to be dying in a second. And Elias is just, like, in the waiting place, perfectly fine now, because he's dead. Helene had just made it back and was like, Oh, I'm here to save you, Emperor, because the Commandant is trying to kill you. He's like, Okay, well, I told you to bring Elias back, and you didn't, so your family's dead. All of this is happening at one time. Elias is dead, Helene's family is about to die, and Laia is trying to help, but... <sighs> Elias ends up taking over the waiting place, and being able to go back to his body. And then Helene, they actually kill her mother, her father, and Hannah, who Marcus was supposed to marry. And he's like, hmm, well, I made a promise, so I'm gonna marry Livy instead, which they had been trying to avoid. I was like, do I prefer Livy dead or married to Marcus? Mm, not sure. I loved that Helene gave Livy the choice. She looked at her and Livy gave that nod that I would rather be married to Marcus than dead with my family. And then Helene agreed. Elias had to make a bunch of mistakes before he realized that other people were capable of their own choices. Helene didn't. She trusted her sister to make that choice herself. They do get out. Elias comes back into himself and they get through the wall of fire, and they make it out, and then the gate doesn't work, and then the warden shows up, and he had discovered that Laia could make herself invisible, which I assume that's going to come into play more later, but he's taking her, and then when Tass went to attack him, I was sure that Tass was about to die, and I was not happy with it. But the warden died instead! Yay! I'm happy about somebody dying, but yay! Yeah, so they get out, Helene is still around. See, things seem to be okay at the moment. Apparently Marcus knew that the Commandant wanted to kill him. But it ends with everybody kind of separating. I love that Darren, Laia, and Elias are kind of on their own in the woods, near the waiting place where Elias now needs to be. I assume he's going to be able to get out of that one in the next one or the book after that, because I can't see him... I mean... Maybe it'll end with him and Laia just, like, together in the woods. But I don't love it. It's possible. It's very, like, third Pirates of the Caribbean. Except, I guess they can still be together as long as she's surrounded by those creepy... Any anyway, I don't know. And then Darren wakes up. And that's the end of the book. Yay! Okay, next one. So, there are two books left. I have a feeling that the third one is going to end with absolute chaos, like Commandant actually taking out Marcus and becoming Empress, and at the same time the Nightbringer letting out all of his cousins or whatever, and having them 
take over and all of that happening at the very end of the third one so the fourth one just starts in chaos with everything happening I think Helene and Harper will get together in the next one I don't think that's gonna wait until the last one and I'm hoping that they both survive I could see Harper dying but I'm hoping that they survive because Helene does deserve a happily ever after in the next one I really want Helene to start working with Elias and Laia like it's gonna happen eventually but I don't want that to wait until the last book I want that to start to happen in the next one I think that's it this book was amazing like I said I think the first half of it was a little bit slower than the last one partly because there weren't trials but the second half was reveal after reveal and it was intense and it was shocking and the feels man the feels <laughs> anyway I'm going to go. I will talk to you next time. Bye! There's a dog jumping at me right now.